today's class is entitled uh, Overcoming Temptation. Now, this is a subject that I taught earlier today anyway, but this is a subject that we've been over so many times, um, but I, it's never enough. It's never enough. Uh, and um, it, again, it's, it's spurned from, a lot of my classes are spurned from things that I hear from people saying, or a lot of times what Bishop goes over, and I've been saying this for the last, maybe about a month, uh, Bishop made a quote, I'm talking about Bishop Nathaniel, Shalom Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Yawasab, Deacons, was, uh, he said something that always, and I keep on repeating, that strike me, is that, um, you know, praying and fasting is not going to remove, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing it vaguely, not going to remove demons by you think you're just going to pray and fast, it's more to that. You have to apply the laws of God. You have to allow the, the laws of God to run free course in you. So uh, Bishop had an acronym uh, a while ago, uh, SPA, Study, Pray, and Apply. Uh, those three things in conjunction is what's going to help you overcome temptation. So uh, today's class uh, is entitled Overcoming Temptation, and I'm going to really lean on you men a lot to hear how do you battle? A lot of times people ask myself, um, well, how do you continue this truth for so long? You know, like, like how do you do it? And, you know, because we all deal with internal things in ourselves. How did, how did you stay around for so long? And hopefully through this lesson, it'll bring some type of clarity to you so you can use it, so you can endure it. Because this whole thing, this truth is about enduring. Can you endure to the end? Many people come in. I saw a sister that was with us many years ago uh, yesterday who was hard, I-U-I-C, a hard, the commandments, always talking about it. And I saw her with a big cigar in her mouth last yesterday. I'm like, damn, you went from daughter Sarah to, to you know, smoking cigar. That's like a, a big jump. What was it that led her there? What was it that she was lacking that she could not endure? And this lesson's for you ladies, too, and, you know, how is it that you continue on because we're all going to be tried, right? All right, so without further ado, let's begin in the book of James, chapter 1. And we're going to start with verse 1. Give me a second. I got to open another Bible because this other Bible is tattered. Yeah, my Bible is beat down. I, I can't read what I got there. Um, uh, Officer Les, you'll be reading for me. Sir. Thank you very much, Officer Halez. Uh, it's the reader. Let's go. One and let's start with verse one. The book of James, chapter one and verse one. Read. James, a servant of God of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. I read this earlier today. So this class is a repeat because I had to teach this earlier. But um, it's to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. For all of us that are scattered throughout the earth, we know according to the prophecy in Deuteronomy 28, 64, that we were going to be scattered to all nations. So the Israelites, and I'm saying this, I know you all understand this, but for people to listen for the first time, the real Jews are black. All right. We are the real Christians, the followers of Christ, right. not Christianity, and that the 12 tribes are made up of the so-called Negroes, Hispanic, Native American Indians that have been scattered throughout the earth uh, because of captivity, because we brought the commandments. We make up the 12 tribes of Israel. Everybody else are not, and there's some people that call themselves the Jews but are imposters, but they're the synagogue of Satan. Another class, another time. So I said that to say we are the 12 tribes that scattered throughout the earth. All right? Read. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, Count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Whoa. Look what James says. Count it all joy when you fall into temptation. Got a question for you men. Okay, when I say I got a question for you men, it'd be good to let you guys look up at me because I'm talking to all of you. Why would you count it joy to fall into temptation? I want right here. Some one of you men. Go ahead. Shalom, Bishop. Most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless. So you count it all joy because you know that the Lord is dealing with you and that in that trial, there's going to be something good on the other side. It's a buildup. So you said God is dealing with you. What do you mean? God is tempting you? No, he's not tempting you. So. He is said, dealing with you, though. 
Okay. Because all of his children, they got to get chastised. Okay. But we're saying tempting you. So God is not tempting you, but finding joy when you're tempted. Say it one. I said God is not tempting you, you you're saying. Correct. But be, joy when, but be joyful when you are tempted. Got you, look at you, got you, look at you. No, no, no. <laughs> That's why I say, no, you don't got me. Right. The Lord is not, he's not the one tempting you. You're well, tempted because well, of your, something inside of you. Ah, oh, there we go. Now you're cooking. There you go. He's not tempting you. But it's something inside of you. Very good. I'm glad you said that because that's what I was looking for. So when it says find it all joy, why would you find it joy? It's because you're becoming better. You're exposed. Is there's a demon inside of you that's being exposed? Ah, come on. There you go. Now you're cooking with fire. Look at you with that good hair. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I wanted. That's what I want. Very good. Very good. Very good. We're gonna unpack this very slowly because it's gonna help us learn about ourselves things that nobody else know. Except you, God, Jesus, and Satan. <laughs> so I'm gonna know about, and that's what we're going to dig into. So very good. Read again. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, mm -hmm. knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The trying of your faith, what's trying your faith? Those temptations are going to try to prove your faith. That's why they're there for. Read on. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So it says, so I'm going to read on down, then I'm going to come back and unpack it. But let patience have a perfect work. Let patience have a perfect work. But that patience comes from what? The triumph of your faith. You try your faith. It's going to bring about that patience. And that patience is going to have its perfect work, entire, wanting nothing. Read on. If any of you lack wisdom. Lack wisdom on what? On patience. How to endure. If anybody lack wisdom. Let him ask of God. All you got to do is ask God. Now, I know what you've taught in church and Sunday school. You pray to God and you say, God, give me wisdom. And churches teach you or you believe like it's just going to float down into your air and you're just going to be full of wisdom. Lord Jesus Christ, no. So <laughs> it works. Uh, church make you dumb as hell. They make you dumb. You just got Jesus Christ, please. I want to understand how to love you, Father God, and I want to serve you, and amen. And then you going back and you watching porn. <laughs> God. Come on, man, please. I can jump off this podium head first. We're going to understand what it means when he says, ask of God. We'll get back to it. Read on. Verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally. As you want, he's going to give it to you. And abradeth not, mm -hmm. and it shall be given of him. Mm -hmm. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that is wavering is like a wave of the sea, driven in the wind and tossed. Okay, so let me say this real quick. If you're wavering, guess what? And you fall into temptation, you're going to fall. We're going to get back to explain it in a loop with some precepts. But if you're that person that's in this truth, wavering one way is, just give you a little tidbit, you come, you come to learn, you're studying, but there's a part of you that's still very cardinal, very worldly. When temptation comes, it is going to provoke that in you. You need it to provoke it in you so you can learn what you got to fix. So you got to ask of God. And we're going to get to the asking of God in a second. But if you stay wavering is truth, you have fin. Another word for wavering is what? Double mind. Another way for wavering is what? Lukewarm. Okay, those are all saying the same thing. You lukewarm, you're not going to endure this fight. When God says... Put on the whole arm of God, Ephesians 2. Don't get it. We're going to read it later. I don't want to explain it now. Let me read on. Verse 7. Verse 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. God said, don't ask me. Don't think you're going to receive nothing on me on how to endure temptation. Let me ask you men something. I'm going to bring something that you will understand. You men that got a wife. If your wife is wavering between loving you and loving somebody else, can she ask anything of you? And you're going to do it? No. So why do we think God is like that? You think God is a simp? 
No, God said, you got to be on me for me to give you what you want. That's, this is very simple to understand. It's not no deep stuff. God said, don't ask me if you waver. If you, if you, if you confuse who's your God, you confuse who's more important in your life. Then don't ask me for nothing. I am about to say a bad word. Don't ask me for nothing. That's how I would think. Tell me if somebody is important to you. I don't come in for what? That makes sense. That's how I know God is black. All right. Well, okay, let me stop. Read on. Verse 9. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Okay, let's stop this. So let's go back and start unpacking this right now. Start with verse 2. Verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Romans 5. We're going to keep on, just hold James because we're going to keep on coming back to James. I want Romans 5, start with verse 1. Romans chapter 5. I start with verse 2. Let's see yes, sir. Going. Romans chapter 5 and verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And we have access through this faith. The access way is Christ. He's our access into this, into this faith, into his grace where we stand. Read on. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And we rejoice in the hope of glory. Another word for rejoice is what? When you rejoice and you are, use the word we use, use the word that we use in James. Joyful. Very good. So read. And rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We have the joy because we're going through tribulations, temptations, trials. We glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. We know that going through these trials, it is to work our patience. We need these tribulations in our lives to find out who we really are. Everybody in their mind think they're right. Everybody in their mind think they're righteous. Nobody, I would hope nobody sitting here and say, I know I'm the devil and I hate God. All of us want to believe we're right. I'm going to tell you, none of us is right. <laughs> That's the first point. In the point. If you think you're right, then you better understand you're really wrong, super wrong. Is we all, Romans 3, let's come back here, Romans 3, 23. Romans chapter Is 3. Is that it? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Four right. short? Yeah. But all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fall short. Give me Sirach 12, uh, Sirach 18, and hold Romans 5. Sirach 18, I forgot what verse it is. I, I think I had it. 18. 18, 18, 12. Sirach, chapter 18 and verse 12. He saw and perceived their end to be evil. Therefore, he multiplied his compassion. God saw and to be evil, so that he multiplied his compassion of us. Because you know, we all fall short of this. Let's go back to Romans. Romans chapter 5. And verse 3, mm -hmm. and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, mm -hmm. knowing that tribulation worketh patience. It works patience. So going through tribulations and trials and temptation, it's going to work out your patience. That's why I've said numerous times before in class, you only lose when you give up. When you give up. Endure, endure, endure. I don't care what you go through. Repent and get back up and fight. Read on. And patience, experience. And ex patience now will do what? It will build your experience. You went through this trial, this tribulation, this temptation, and count of joy that you had it. Because it's supposed to expose to you the parts of you that just ain't right. That's in all of us. And now you have experience. 
you have experience to now know how to fight it off and more importantly, not just fight it off, how to help another person through it. This is what you have to do. I'm telling you because of my experience and I'm still here. Important. Read. And experience hope. And that experience now builds your faith because you come out on the other end. While you're going through it, it don't feel good, but it is good for you. And then you come out now, and now your faith is stronger. But at that point, you think you're good. Nah, we need these tribulations in our life, these temptations in our lives. That's where it says counter joy. Let's go back. I want you to read verse 2 one more time. James chapter 1 and verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. That's why he's saying that. Count it joy when you fall into temptation. Read on. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That trying of your faith, God is trying to see if you're worthy of him. It's going to work your patience. That's why a lot of times, let me tell you something. In temptations, a lot of times we fall into temptations for one reason and one reason only. We're not patient. We can't wait. We fall into fornication because we can't wait till God sends us the right woman. We fall into stealing because we can't wait until we get the right job in our lives. A lot of people sit in prison today because they lack patience. We, 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 we rush to act with our mouths, with our hands to fight, not understanding in your patience what? Possess you your soul. Be swift to what? Slow to speak. Control yourself. Verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work. Now, how is patience having her perfect work? We just read it. Knowing this, the trying of your faith worketh your patience. Yes, you want somebody to say, you want to say something? No, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. I was based off of this. It says that. Patience has her perfect work by you letting it, you going through the trials and That's tribulations. It. That's it. Going through it. Not running, not giving up. Hold this real quick. Give me to that. And um, I wasn't going to pull. Give me to, what is it? Ecclesi, Sirach 2. Both of them have lost patience. Sirach 2. I forgot what uh, verse it is. Uh, Sirach, the book. Thank you very much. So, Rock, chapter 2 and verse 14. Let me get there with you. Go ahead, read it. Woe unto you that have lost patience. Mm -hmm. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Right. Woe unto you that have lost patience. You gave up. Lord told you, and I don't want to read this chapter right now, but Lord told you that, verse 5, watch this. Let me use this chapter, being that we're saying. Verse 5, read on. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Temptations. Men are going to be tried in that. G righteous men, righteous women are going to be tried to see what they are going to do. They're going to be tried in a furnace of adversity. So if you do verse 14, read on. Believe in him, and he will help thee. No, 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 no. Verse 14. Yes, sir. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? What, what, what would you do? Why would you lose patience? Why would you not be able to endure through this? Because of verse 12. Verse 12. Woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth two ways. Double-minded. We're going to read that when we get back to James. Double-minded. You halt between two opinions. You're not sure. You're Israelite today because you got the purple on. You're keeping the commandments. Then tomorrow, you're back to the same nigga, whore, whatever you're doing back in the world. Then you bounce back in here. How are you going to endure temptations in that day? Impossible. You got to be singular of mind. Who you are here is who you got to be at home when nobody's around. Because only you, God, and the devil know exactly what's going on. So when those tribulations come, you say, why did that brother fall? Because he ain't real. Why did she fall? They wasn't real. They might have looked the part, but they really wasn't that. Because when those temptations came, they fell. But now eventually we're going to get to this class. 
The question or the point was, how do you overcome it? All right. Let's go back to the book of James. Uh, verse five. James chapter one and verse five. If any no, of no, you no, no, no. Verse four. Yes, sir. Verse four. But let patience have her perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That you might be perfect. Didn't Christ say, be perfect as my Father in heaven is per perfect? Entire. Entire means whole, wanting nothing, meaning lacking nothing. How is that? Um, the precept I want for that, if I can remember what it says, I could tell you where it's at. Just read it again, I'll tell you what I'm looking for. But let patience have a perfect work. That ye may be perfect. Ephesians. Thank you. Uh, Ephesians 4. Don't quote me on Peter. I got to look at it first. Uh, is it Ephesians 4? Give me one second. Yeah, Ephesians 4. What's this? Ephesians 4 verse 13. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. So we all come in the unity of the faith. Okay. How do we come in the unity of the faith? Read the beginning of verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. Remember it says perfect, entire, wanting nothing. So the whole point of the apostles is to, to what? To perfect you. To perfect you. To the perfecting of the saints. Read on. For the work of the ministry. Read on. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Read on. So we all come in the unity of the faith. So we all come in the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. And the, to the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto we, a perfect man. Unto a what? Unto a perfect man. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Entire wanting nothing. That's saying the same thing here. Jump on now to verse 15. Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head. That you might grow up into him, entire, wanting, lacking nothing. The reason why you can't lack anything is because you're going to be tried. That's why the scripture says, as I say it, you tell me, put on that you might. Okay, it seems like y'all don't know the scripture because I hear do we, do we need to go to it? Okay, tomorrow we're going to have Sunday school. All right. Come on, officers. Quote it for me. If, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, security. Help us again. That you might, thank you very much, that you might be able to stand the wiles or the tricks of the devil. Entire, lacking nothing. So you might have all this armor on. But it's that little one spot there like, you know what? I'm going to pick one that's not really a, what people might think. Um, they're all big. It's just like thinking, which one is a small one? Um, um, unforgiving. So you may not be an adulterer. You may not be a thief. But you can't forgive. And Satan is going to stay right there. Right there. Keep on working that stuff. Put situations in your life to keep on poking you right there until he break you. But if you're entire, wanting nothing, you'll be good because you understand Christ says forgive. Luke 17, don't get to it. Right, 17? Don't get to it. Isn't, that where it's, isn't Luke 17? Say yes so I know I'm not crazy. Okay, you don't got to go to it. Luke 17. Seven times 70. It doesn't say that? Okay, that's good. I don't want it. I don't want it. Yeah, I just want to make sure I ain't tripping. All right, so watch this. So, verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Okay, watch this. Let's go back now. Verse 5. James, chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally and upbraid if not. If, it, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. If you lack wisdom, ask of God. So now, how do you ask of God? 
Uh, real quick, uh, Ciroc won. Uh, uh, one twenty something. Um, twenty six. That's it. Thank you. Sirach, chapter one, verse twenty six. If thou desire wisdom, if you desire wisdom, you want wisdom. Remember, he said, "Ask of God." Read on. Keep the commandments. Keep the what? The commandments. Is that Sirach one twenty six? Yes, sir. Yeah, if that desires wisdom, keep the commandments. Read on. And the Lord shall give her unto thee. And the Lord is going to give her unto thee. So now, how do you learn the command? How do you know the commandments? You got to study. You got to open the book. So you want to know how to endure, overcome temptation? Here's one way. You got to study. You got to open the book. You got to study, pray, and apply. That's how you overcome it. So if any man lack wisdom, read it again. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Read on. And the Lord shall give her unto thee. The Lord shall give her unto thee. Watch this. I want you to jump up to verse 19. Verse Sirach chapter 1, verse 19. Now, no, now n notice, if you study and you're keeping the commandments, God is going to give her unto you, and then he's going to do this. Read on. Wisdom reigneth down skill. And now that you have wisdom, you're going to have skill. Read on. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding. And then it's going to give you knowledge of understanding. So then when you fall into these diverse temptation, be joy. Because now you have a skill. You can see it afar off and say, no, I should not do that. That's what the scripture says. You're going to have an understanding on how to overcome it. And we're going to dig a little deeper in overcoming it because it's easy to say that, but the application of it is something else. Because what I'm saying, everybody knows this already. It's not like you're just hearing it, at least here, you're not hearing it for the first time. So the question is, how do you get from the point of hearing it to the point of applying it? There's, there's, um, there seems to be like a disconnect in our minds on hearing the scriptures and knowing what it means and then the application of it in our lives. We will hear it, but then many times we don't do what it says. We'll give in to that old man and don't allow the scriptures to run its free course. So read verse 19. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding. And knowledge of understanding. Read on. And exalteth them to honor that hold her fast. Oh, wait a second. The point I want out that is you got to hold on to it fast. You can't let go of it. You can't serve two masters. You can't be double-minded. You holding on to wisdom, you better grab on and don't let go. Hold fast. That's one of the reasons why we fall, because we're not holding fast on it. In other words, you'll be studying the Bible today, and then you won't pick it up for another three, four days. You're not holding fast. When I wake us up, when I wake us up, when I lie us down, it's supposed to be in your mind, meditating, playing classes. A lot of times we will feed our spirit with all these worldly things and then wonder why we are not able to overcome certain things. Because you're just watching Sukiana videos and watching a twerk video, sort of, or watching a list some rap music that's murder music, and then you wonder why you can't overcome <laughs> what you're going through. You know, I don't know. I can't overcome lung cancer. Maybe it's because you're still smoking cigarettes. Did you ever think that? That's why it's causing it? You're still feeding yourself with the things that's not expedient to your benefit to grow spiritually. You know why? You're double-minded. You're double-minded. There's a part of you that want to hear that. There's a part of you that's deep down in you wants to hear that. And God is saying, good, joy when you fall on all manner of temptation. Because it's supposed to reveal to you, that's still you, buddy. That stuff is alive in you. But if you want to get out of that, ask of God. He said he'll give, to, he'll give you understanding how to escape it. We'll get to it in a second. He said, I'm going to show you how to escape it. Only thing left to do is just do it. And that's what it comes. That's the whole point of my classes because Bishop said it about fasting and praying, and then 
if you're not really keeping the commandments, you know, all that fasting and praying don't really work if you're not keeping the commandments. People think it's like it's some like some osmosis, ooh, and you and you, and you just wake up and you're different. No, no. Church teach you that foolishness, not the Bible. Okay, um, drop that. So I want to go back to James. One verse six. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. So the, the faith is grown how? How is your faith grown? What is faith? Another word for faith. So long, Bishop. Faith is believing. Believing. Okay, he just told you the word, now just give me the precept. If you have faith, that means you believe. And if you believe, what are you going to do? What scripture are you going to give me? Let's go. The book of Sirach. For the life of me, I don't understand how people cannot, how, how the mind can separate the commandments of God. I, it's, it is such a spirit of witchcraft where you think, I heard a guy say, I was on WCO, hey, you, you, hey IT, I know it's last minute, but I just got to play. Give me that, um, uh, that Amir looking like guy. I know Amir. That guy look like Amir. You know what I'm talking about? He said, you sin, you know what I'm talking about? You got it ready real quick? I, everybody on the line, just watch this. This is just, I marvel when I saw this. Should I keep on talking? If. Okay. Here. If I don't know nothing, I know I'm saved. I'm going to say something folk won't say. You, you, you can go to hell, but it can't be for sin. You can go to hell, but it cannot be for sin. Because Jesus paid the price for sin. Stop. Come on, man. Christ said, if you love me, come on, man. You know he don't ask of God for understanding. You think when he fall into diverse temptations, he's overcoming it? No, he's every hurtful lust. You think, you told me he's asking of God and God is telling him, listen, you can go to hell, but it can't be for sinning. So why do you go to hell for, if it's not sin, what's the opposite of not sinning? So, you, so in other words, you can go to hell for keeping the commandments, but it can't be for sin. Man, please, take, if I ever, I'm giving you all order, if you ever hear me spew anything like that, take a small caliber pistol and put it to the back of my ear and end and, and this, this, this life I have. That is retarded. You telling me what, I'm sorry, I'm going off the traffic. Christianity is a drug. It's crack. That thing is crack. How the hell you going to say you will not go to hell for sinning. That means I could be a murderer, a adulterer, a pedophile, a whoremonger, bestiality, a thief. I can do every sin in the Bible. And I can't go to hell for that because Christ died for those sins. So Christ died for my sins so I can continue in sin. Come on, man. I just paid all your parking tickets so you could speed again? Nigga, please. Come on, man. That's very simple. I don't know how, that's how you know religion and church is witchcraft. Because you say that and somebody right now, a Christian right now, wants to argue that point. 
it is ungodly to keep God's commandments. Why did I go there for? Because I'm sick and tired of hearing that old Christian, y'all people stop with that old, I'm telling you young people, because some of the old people are sealed in their faith. But some of you young ones, I know y'all got some sense. You don't see the hustle in that, that garbage. It's wrong. So in other words, it's wrong to keep God's commandments. No, please. No, no, stop, stop, stop. Where was I going to, officer? A oh, double-minded, right? Double-minded man. Give me that real quick. The Toss to and fro. Give me verse 6. James chapter 1 and verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Mm -hmm. for, let not a, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. What do you think he going to receive of the Lord? Understanding? Nah, you toss to and fro. You hop between two opinions. You all over the place. You unstable. Give me that real quick. Sirach 5. And if any brothers on the streets, if somebody got you stutter stepping in these scriptures about Christianity and what they teach, when I say Christianity, I'm talking about the religion of Christianity. Come on, man. And if you people out there who are, who are Christians, meaning the religion of Christianity, follow that. And you love God, you're going to submit to the word of God. I don't know how you can find keeping the commandments as a sin and something wrong for not murdering, not stealing. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the law has got to be in your heart. Yeah, 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 you're right, it's supposed to be in your mind, the heart. But the application of it is the key in it working. Give me that, Sirach 5, 9. The book of Sirach, chapter 5 and verse 9. We know not with the every wind. Start with, yeah, that's good, we know. Yes, sir. We know not with every wind, and go not into every way. For so doth the sinner that hath a double tongue. That's a sinner that hath a double tongue. That's tossed to and fro. I'm going to ask you men right now. How is it? Young man right here. You. What's your name? Let me ask you, because soldier, how long have you been in truth? Uh, a little over two years. Sir. A little bit over two years. So you got a basic understanding of what the Bible's talking about, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let me ask you a question. I'm talking to you. I'm a Christian of the world. And you're teaching me. And I'm asking, and I'm going to ask you, so is it wrong? I hear you Israelites teaching that we can't eat pork. But the Bible says in 1 Timothy, if I can recall, 4, mm -hmm. everything God made is good and nothing to be refused. Amen. Do you believe that? So I would give them the understanding. I would go to the law and uh, just break down. But the laws are done away with, with the blood of Jesus. So, so in Matthew 5, 17, Christ said, think not that I'll come to destroy the law. So Very the good. law that was done away with is the law of uh, sacrifice when you look at Hebrews. So you believe that we're not under grace is what you're telling me. We are under grace. Uh, I believe Titus, I want to say two or three it uh, teaches that grace is to give us time to learn how to keep your commandments. Again. Two and eleven, very good, yes, very sir. good. Now that's how you do it. Yes, sir. That's asking of God. How did you learn that? How how did you learn it? Oh, I based on what we just read. No, no, God, let me hear what you're gonna say. Oh, so when I first came to the truth, I learned from the welcome home packet. I learned from applying, uh, praying, studying, and uh, uh, no, no, that's how you learn. Yes, sir. One man planted. Another man worked, but God gave you the increase. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm saying it's not man that did it, because all we are is mouthpiece for the word of God. God has instructed you. Yes, sir. So that's how you, so how the hell, I'm, I, for the life of me, why was I bringing that up for? Because I can't stand Christianity. I, that's why I brought it up for, I can't stand it. Y'all don't get fooled with that foolishness on the street talking about that. These are people that did not ask of God, and God did not give them. They stumbled between two words. They don't understand the Bible. But you know what? Somebody would get caught with that. You know why? Because there's parts of them that ain't right. And somebody's going to say something that's going to scratch your itch. And you're going to go right along with that foolishness and fall. So what it says, winnow what? Winnow not with every wind. And go not into every way. For so doth the sinner that hath a double tongue. And go not in every way. Because what a person would do is say, well, 
based on what I said, they'll say, yeah, the Bible did say that. Yeah, the Bible said that, but you're wrong. You don't understand what the Bible means when he said everything God made it be to be accepted, not to be refused, but received with thanksgiving. Yeah, the Bible said, but you don't understand the Bible. Don't play with them. No, 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 no. Let's just agree to disagree. No. You wrong. God going to kill you for that. Verse 11. So Rock chapter 5, verse No, no, 10. Yes, sir. Verse 10. Be steadfast in thy understanding. You better be steadfast in your understanding. Don't be turned two ways. You know why? Because if you are turned two ways, you're not going to be able to endure when, when tribulation, temptation come your life. You will falter. Read on. And let thy word be the same. And let your word always be the same. Keep God's commandments. Read on. Be swift to hear. And let thy life be sincere. That's the point I want. Let your life be, be swift to listen to every godly discourse. And here's the point. Let thy life be sincere. When you're living a sincere life before God, even if you lack a certain level of understanding, what did God say? Ask of God. Open the Bible. John, uh, John 5.39. Be sincere, so as he get that from me, and let, and, and so be sincere, and with patience give answer. Be swift to hear. Be sincere, and with patience you're going to grow an experience. And with that experience, you're going to be able to give answer. Ask of God, read. John chapter 5 verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Christ said, search the scriptures, for in them you believe you have faith that you have eternal life. Read on. And they are, and they, are they which testify of me. This whole Bible testify of Christ from Genesis to, Re to Revelations. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. He's telling you the book is him. So then, was there sin in Christ? No. So why can they be sinning you and you think you're going to get the kingdom of heaven? Was Christ double-minded in what he believed? No. So what makes you think you're going to escape? Was Christ not tempted of Satan? And what did Christ use to defeat him? The word of God. But it's going to be impossible for you to do that if you some time in this Bible. There have been, I've been in schools where it, it's been a um, lost and found, and ain't nothing but full of Bibles. But I said, this Bible been sitting here for the last four weeks. We're going to claim it or we're going to throw it away eventually. I'm like, how do you go four weeks without your Bible? A, see, I got to catch myself. A person won't even go four minutes without their cell phone. Oh, where is that? Yeah, where's my cell phone at? How do you go through a whole week and don't know? This happened in Orlando a while ago. There was a, a loss and found, and the Bible was sitting there for a few weeks. And it's like, yeah, a few weeks. It's just, oh, that's my Bible. And I looked, and I sat back in the chair, like, oh, she ain't lasting to this truth. And she was married to I was like, oh, she ain't going to last. I know. And guess what? She didn't last. You want to tell me what she's doing? All you got to do is ask me. I'll tell you what she's doing. Oh, you don't want to know what she's doing. Who wants to know? You want to know what her husband's doing? Okay, you all asked. Okay. Well, he's no longer a husband. But, and what I'm about to tell you came from his mouth. This ain't like no gossip. This is the man. If I'm lying, may God judge me. Let's just start from that. Last I heard from his mouth, he, went, he got hospitalized. They broke up. He got hospitalized. He got sick. So she moved into his apartment to take care of their kids. And when he came out the hospital, he sleep on the couch while she was in the bedroom with another man, and they was living there. This man was living in the house. He had a t this is his apartment. He's on the couch, and she's and I know that dude was in there playing playing carpenter. Leave it like that. That's the same sister that her Bible was in lost and found. I'm like, oh, you ain't. And when I said she wasn't lasting, this long before angels have. Oh, she ain't lasting. Oh no 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 no. How many of you been sick to your stomach? 
can't find your Bible. Oh, God, man, I tell you something. I lose my wallet, my phone. My, you lose your Bible. Oh, gosh. I'll be, sick to, I'll be sick to my stomach. That's why you got to always have a backup. <laughs> Put a GPS, like a, a little Apple thing. In there. Lose your Bible. You ain't lasting. Okay, what were we talking about then? Yeah, she was, get, she was getting, mm, let me stop. Be swift to hear, sincere, right? Where did we leave off at? Um, search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Drop the, okay, so go back to James. Read. What verse we left off at? Uh, James Double chapter minded 1. Man. Yes, sir, verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He will not be able to escape when those temptations come in his life. Watch this. Uh, jump on down to verse 19. Verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. A double man, a double-minded man is going to be unstable in all his ways. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, it's best that you be swift to hear and slow to speak. So you can learn how to escape. Read on. Slow to speak and slow to wrath. And slow to wrath. So if you are if you are slow to wrath, you are showing what? Patience. What's going to happen? You're going to be tempted. That's what it says, not just lust of the flesh. Lust is more than just sexual lust. Some people got the lust of war and fighting. Slow to speak. Watch this. Go to James 3, uh, verse 18, right? James. Uh, no, three, 3, verse 8. James chapter 3 and verse 8. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil Full of deadly poison. That's why you be slow to speak because a tongue is an unruly member of your body. Full of deadly poison. Never be rash with your tongue. Learn to be patient. So you're going to be put in situations, if that's your weakness, where temptations are going to come and you're going to have, thank God when you fall into all these temptations, now it's time to apply what you've learned. Jump on down. To verse 14. No, no, James 3. James chapter 3, verse 14. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. That strife is that wrath slow to wrath. That's another temptation that might come in somebody's life. Where you're slow to wrath, you have patience, knowing that I'm being tried right now because it's something that lays dormant in me that I want to knock his block off. God said, no. Learn to control yourself. So I'm going to put these things in your life to expose it to you. Watch this. But why would you feel that you have to speak that way or react that way? Why? Verse 15. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. That's why. Because it is earthly, it is sensual, it deceives you. It is sensual. It feels good to you. Feels good to you where? In all those hidden parts of your spirit that just ain't right. It activates you. There you go. It activates that part of you. That's why it says, give me James, uh, hold this real quick. Give me uh, Romans 12. Romans 12. 21. The book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. How do you overcome evil with good? Ask of God. Study. He's going to show you how you overcome evil with good. You know why? 
because many of us never learned verse 17. Verse 17, recompense to no man, evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Read on. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. It says, as much as possible, you're patient. You try to avoid as much as possible. Live peaceable with all men. As much as possible. That lies within you. As much as possible, that lies within you. In you where? In your mind. Go to chapter 13, verse 14. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. But put on ye, on the Lord Jesus Christ. You better put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think it's a coat? Where do you put him on? In your mind. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision for the flesh. And make no provisions for the flesh. I've been over this many times before. Provisions that you make for your flesh is what? Excuses. You hide it. It's staying dormant inside of you. Thank God. Be joyful when you fall into temptations. It's supposed to reveal those things to you Ask of God, and he's going to show you how to overcome it. Make no provisions for the flesh. To fulfill the lust thereof. You make excuses for it, and eventually you're going to fulfill the lust thereof. So when you make a provisions for the flesh, help me understand what does that mean. Give me some words. Good. Idol. Huh? Idol. Okay, all right, but something else. You make provisions for it. You make what? You make time, something else. Right there, sir. Huh? You plan, right? I like, I, let me use the word plan. You plan for it. You make provisions. You plan. So there's a part of you that want to be right. But there's another part of you that's making a plan. So what are you? Double-minded. Now, how are you going to escape if you're double-minded? You keep that little hot pocket that's deep down in you, men and women. That's all of us that keep down there that's dormant. He said, I'm going to expose that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you who you are. Because many of us say we're righteous. He said, no, 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 nigga. No, 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 no. You think you're righteous. I'm going to poke at you and find your weakest place. I'm going to show you, you know what? You are easily manipulated by another man. He can move you from what you know is right. I'm going to show you that you're easily manipulated by a woman. She's going to move you wherever she wants you. You think you're right. You ain't right. No, 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 no. Watch this. Luke. Twenty-two. Verse. We read this very often. Twenty-two. Um... Twenty-nine, The book of Luke, chapter 22 and verse 29. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. He said, I appoint you a kingdom that you can sit on thrones, like my Father appointed to me. Read on. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. He said, wait a second. I appointed a place for you to sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. But Simon, Satan desired to sift you as wheat. Understand, to get to that throne where you want to sit at, you're going to have to get past Satan. Because Satan desires you. He wants you. If you, for Satan to move you, he would have to do what? Let me just say it because you're not going to get it off the top. Well, let me ask. There's a place for you to sit on a throne, right? For Satan to get you 
to move you, he would have to do what? I don't know how to ask questions. Nah, who said it? Say it louder. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 right. That's not the word I want. No. Yes, all those words are right. Huh? Okay, stop. You're not going to get it. It's just, just one word that I want that nobody said. He said like that was the right word. You know, what he only doing that because he got his hair did. So now all of a sudden now, he, he, he said a lie. It does start with, a, it start with an E, so you ain't too far. He has to enter into you. All those other ones you said was right too. Don't get me wrong. But I just want the word I want. So he can move you. He has to enter into you to move you. Satan desires to have you. Read that again. Verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. So he told him there's a place for you, but Satan desired to have you, that he could sift you as wheat. So we understand that to, to, to avoid or to overcome that, we have the acts of God. We got to study. We got to apply these scriptures so we can fight off the wiles of the devil. Read on. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. What is he telling him? He said, Christ said, I pray for you that you can endure through this. But I'm telling you, Peter, when you're converted, then strengthen your brethren. What is he telling Peter? Right? He's telling Peter, you ain't right yet. You ain't right. There's a place for you to sit to judge the 12 tribes of Israel right now. And because of that, Satan desires you to sift you, to pull you out of here. But I'm going to give you a way to escape. I'm going to show you how to get around that. But you first got to get converted. You got to learn all the things that's deep down in you, the stuff that's in you that ain't right. And then after you get that out of you, then go convert your brother. What did Peter say? And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both in a prison and to death. Look what Peter said. Lord, I'm ready to go with you now to prison and to death. To prison and to death. What did Christ just tell him? He said, you ain't converted yet. You ain't right yet. But you ready to go where? He said, I'm ready to go to death. What did Christ say? And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. He said, the cock won't even crow. You're going to deny me three times before the clock even crow. You telling me you ready to go to prison and you ready to die. No, you're not, buddy. No, you're not. I just told you he desired to sift you as weak. But being that you said that, okay. Counter all joy. When you fall into the temptation. What was the temptation that he fell into? Peter. Hablame. Um, when many people approached him, accents, accusing him of uh, being connected to Christ, he denied that. Why would he deny that for? Because he was afraid of the um, uh, persecution that he would go through. What persecution he was going to go being through? Being put to death as well. Right. So he was afraid of what? No, 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 no. Stay. What was he afraid of? Temptation. Okay, what was the temptation he was afraid of? You're right. Death. Death. Death, Death. Death is what he was caught up on. Christ said, you got to lose your life to save your life. Christ knew that about him. Like, Peter, you're going to deny me three times before that cock grow. You think you bought it? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go to jail and die. No, you're not, Peter. I'm telling you, same desire to sift you. So we're going to see if that's what you say. You say that's who you are, right? Okay, here you go. Go to verse 54. Verse 54. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid helped. 
I'm sorry, but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, woman, I know him not. You say, woman, I, who you talking about? I don't know him. I don't know him not. Well, Peter, I thought you said you was ready to die. Read on. And after a little while, another saw him and said, thou art also of them. And Peter said, man, I am not. <laughs> so they came back and asked him again, Peter, uh, you, you, man, you, you with him? He said, no, I ain't. I ain't with him. Read on. And about the space of one hour. And what? And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed saying of a truth, this fellow also was with him. This guy said, no, 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 no. This dude was with Christ. I'm telling you I know he was. Read on. For he is a Galilean. He's a Galilean. I know. It. I can tell he's with Christ. Read on. And Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. He said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. But hold this. We're going to come right back here, right? Because we're going to see how, he, how Mark explained it. Go to Mark 14, verse 71. Mark chapter 14 and verse 71. Oh, give me a second. I'm going yes, to Mark 14, <sighs> 71. Read on. But he began to curse and to swear, and saying. He began to what? He began to curse and to swear, saying. I know not this man of whom ye speak. You hear what he said? He said, Get the f I don't, God, God damn, I don't, I don't know him. Damn. I said, I don't know him. Read on. And the second time the cock crew. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him. Mm -hmm. Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. You know what Peter's, his, his temptation was? His own life. He was afraid to lose his life. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Ask of God and he will build you up to endure through it. How do we know? Let's go to First Peter now. Let's read about Peter. Peter wept and Peter became a mighty, mighty apostle. Watch this. Uh... Peter's, to bear with me, uh, I want First Peter's chapter 1, I want you to read verse uh, 1, start with verse 11. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Look what he says. He testified the sufferings of Christ. Peter was right there. He saw the sufferings of Christ. And the what? And the glory. And the glory that should follow. Peter came to understand the glory that will follow after that. Read on. Unto whom it was revealed. Unto whom it was revealed. Read on. That not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. It was given to them to understand these things. Peter endured through it the sufferings of Christ. Look what he says next. Read. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Now he's doing what? He's converted, and now he's strengthening his brethren. He's saying, gird up the loins of thy mind. Read on. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. He's telling you what? Get, gird up the loins of your mind. He understands now. And Peter ended up losing his life for this gospel, saving his life for the kingdom. He had to have been pricked with that. He had to have been tested in the things that he most was wary of. Kind of joy that you find these things. You know what? 
Peter would have never known or never acknowledged that had he not been put in that situation. That's why James said, kind of joy when you fall into these diverse temptations. You need it to reveal in you, but you better ask of God. Study, learn, apply. So you can be able to what? To overcome when those temptations are in your life. Go back to James. So again, I'm saying this because we read these scriptures and here, here it is. This is what you need to overcome. This is how you overcome. What we left off in James? Uh, oh, no, 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 uh, no, no, uh, 515. What was it again? Uh, let me see again. Okay, drop that. I'm sorry. Go to, um, go to James 1 and 2 again. Watch this. James chapter 1 and verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Watch this. Go, now, go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. With that temptation, he's going to do what? Will also make a way to escape. With that temptation that he's going to put you in, he's also, no, let me take that back. With that temptation that you suffer, he will also give you a way to escape that temptation. So, listen, watch this. Kind of joy that you fall into temptation. But he's going to give you a way to escape that temptation. What is the way to escape it? Sit in front of you. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. So even though you suffer these temptations, just know you're tempted. Why? Huh? It's your own lust in you. And that is to what? to reveal to you where you're lacking at. But if you're, if you're lacking, who do you ask? Ask of God. How do you ask? Open the scriptures. Hold this. We're going to come right back here. Go back to James. James, I want verse 12. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. That endure the temptation. Blessed is that man that endureth temptation. Read on. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. But when he is tried, he will receive the crown of life. Blessed is the man that endure that. Read on. Which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The Lord has promised them that love them. Read on. Let no man say. When he is tempted, I am tempted of God. He said, but when you're tempted, don't say you're tempted of me. It's not me that's tempting you. Why? For God cannot be tempted with evil. He said, because I can't be tempted with evil. Read on. Neither tempteth he any man. Ne neither does he tempt any man. But why are you tempted? Read on. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. He said, that's what's inside of you, buddy. You're only tempted when you're drawn away of your own lust. I'm only revealing it for you so you can fix it. So you better kind of joy when you're tempted. And I'm going to give you a way to escape. All you got to do is take it. Do what I tell you to do, and I'll show you how to escape. He gives everybody a way out. But here's the point. You'll never find that way out. If you don't find no joy in this Bible, if you don't have this book open, you ain't going to find out how to get out of it. Search the scriptures. That's what he says to do. Read on. Uh, verse 12 again. I mean, verse 14. Yes, sir. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When he's drawn away of his own lust and what? And enticed. And entice. Go to Sirach 15. Fifteen and eleven. 
the book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 11. Say not thou, it is through the Lord that I fell away. Don't say it's the Lord why you fell away, read on. For thou oughtest not to do the things that he hated. <laughs> Man, come on. There's no other way to explain it other than the way you just read it. Don't say it's the Lord. You shouldn't do the things that he hates, read on. Say not thou, he hath caused me to err. Mm -hmm. For he that hath no for he hath no need of a of the sinful man. Right, he has no need of a man that's sinful. So don't say it's the Lord why you fell. It's of your own doing. Because he just told you back in Corinthians 10, 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It's common to man. There's no temptation that's not common that somebody else hasn't dealt with. And because there's been other people that's dealt with it, Guess what? There's other people with experience that will help you to strengthen you. Hey, I'm going to help you all right now. Here's one of it right now. You're getting the scriptures on how to overcome it right now. Don't say this is God speaking to you, giving you a way out. Right. Here you go. You're reading it. Read on. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape? He will make a way for you to escape. He's going to give you a way to escape. First Peter 5. Oh, you're good. I'm sorry. That you may be able to bear it. That you'll be able to bear it. He's not going to make you be tempted above what you can handle. I'm going to give it to you. You know what that's called today? When, when you criticize somebody, it's constructive. Here's the problem, what you're doing wrong, and here's the solution to it. All you got to do, I'm not going to just tell you what's wrong. I'm going to give you the rod and the reproof. I'm going to give you what's wrong and the solutions to fix it. Now, what you do with it is what you do with it. But you can't say you don't know because I'm giving you a way to escape. I'm going to send a prophet to you to tell you, hey, bro, I'm going to have a class that's taught that's going to resonate with you, and only you know that I'm talking to you. Have none of you ever experienced, because I know I've experienced it, nobody, speak for yourself. I've sat through classes before. I'm like, damn, that, it's the Lord, uh, this class is for me. Every precept is about me. Nobody ever experienced that before? You know how you know, that, you know, how you know that's happening? Watch this, because you're going to laugh. If you ever hear a class and you see me don't look up, you know, every the precepts is for me. You can't, you can't raise your head. You think, they looking at me. Oh, Lord, Jesus, Lord, they must be looking at me. You, can, you know, every of them scriptures is cut good. It ain't supposed to feel good, but it's good for you. Your head, your, your, your neck is heavy. You're stuck in that book. You don't even want to look up because you know somebody look right through your soul. Okay. Where I got you going to? First Peter 5. First Peter 5. Uh, first Peter 5 and 9. The book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 9. And a way to escape. Who, whom resists steadfast in the faith. Whom, you, Satan, you resist steadfast. Here's a way to escape. Whom you resist steadfast in the faith. Read on. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren, that are in the world. Didn't we just read that in Corinthians 10? It's not uncommon to man. Read on. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, settle you. After you, after you suffer a little while, you go through them tribulations, you fight it, you're going to be established, settled. You just got to endure through it. You can't give up. That's the point. So read again from the top. Who resi whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Right. It says, whom you resist steadfast in the faith. The faith is what? We just read that in James. The faith of your patience. Patience worketh, worketh experience, 
experienced hope. Another word for hope is faith. That was Romans 5. Why? Why do you have to resist steadfast? Verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Because that's what God, that's what Christ told Paul. I mean, Peter. Satan desired to sift you as wheat. So what was, what was Christ to Peter? Give me some adjectives that he was. We know he was a shepherd. What else would he be called? A leader. In experience, he would have been what to him? A father. Another word for father is a elder. Read verse 1. First Peter chapter 5, verse 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. He said he walked with him, right? And what Christ told him after his strength, what he told him to do? Read the next verse. Feed the flock of God. Why? Because he got experience. I'm telling you, this is what you got to do, buddy. I, I'm telling you, feed. That's what he came next. Feed them. Tell them. Here's your way out. I'm telling you, here's your way out. Why, why would he be good at doing that? Didn't because he endured through it himself? He sought to find out who he really was, what he was lacking. He was embarrassed. He fixed it. He endured. Now, I'm going to tell you what you got to do. I'm going to tell you how you endure. I'm going to show you how you do this for the next 20, 30 years because I've been there. I'm going to show you what you have to do. Feed the flock. Which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not, not by constraint, but willingly. And then do what? Verse 9. Verse 9. Whom, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Why? Because he's seeking to devour you. That's why Christ told him, Satan desire to sift you as wheat. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have, su ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, settle you. So what happened? You now established, strengthened, you settled. You're no longer, if you if you established, you're settled, you're no longer tossed to and fro, double-minded. You establish, you settle. You no longer halt between two opinions. You got to grow out of that. Let me say he walked with you through crooked ways. Why? And after a while, you're supposed to be established, settled. All that youthful lust stuff, you beyond that. This is how you overcome temptation. So resisting, Sirach 19. nineteen five. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 5. Whoso taketh pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. <laughs> but he that resisteth pleasures crowneth his life. You, bet, you, learn, you said resist and he shall flee. You want to flee? You have to resist the pleasures of these world. Resist sin. Because the scripture said, verse 5, Whoso taketh pleasure in wickedness. If you take any pleasure in evil, if you just happen on, look at me, brothers and sisters, if there's something inside of you that's, that's, in, that's deep inside of you that sit back and you enjoy on some level, you find, this is for you, you enjoy any type of evil. I'm going to tell you what caught me. I laughed when I saw uh, Medea. What's so funny about that? That's a man. That's an abomination in God's eyes. All this stuff is put out there. Now, mind you, I'm disgusted with a man in a dress or a woman dressed out of order. But damn, she is wearing them pants. Oh, you evil nigga. There's a party you activate where you like, 
She got a fat. Ah, oh, nah, you evil nigga. <laughs> so he said, gotcha, nigga. Gotcha. I know what you like. And I'm going to bring every fat backside in your view right now. I'm going to keep on pricking on that. What does the verse say? Whoso taketh pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. You find something that's laying dormant inside of you that activates you. Remember I told you before, one of Satan's ways, if he gets you to laugh at sin, got you. I know how you may not, but you still find it funny. Would you find it funny if your son was dressed in a dress, walking around doing that? No, you wouldn't. So why is that funny? Because a part of you don't have no problem with it. He wants you to laugh at it. Would you find it funny or would you laugh or would you find anything that, that excites you if you see his daughter in a pair of pants? No. So why you like that woman in a pair of pants? Because something is still inside of you. He's going to prick at that until he destroys you. Because the next part of that verse says what? But he that resisteth pleasures crowneth his life. If you could resist it, you're going to crown yourself life. You're going to get yourself the kingdom. But no, to sit and judge the 12 tribes of Israel, he said, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. So you got to ask yourself, who would know that better than you? Nobody. Nobody knows. Only you, God, and Satan. There's only one right there that's in your mind. You, God, and Satan. So God, how, so I'm going to give you a way to escape. Here's one one right now. We're going through the scriptures. Now what you do with them is up to you. But you can't say in that day you did not learn or hear how to overcome temptation. You got to train your mind and see her in them pants and think it's abhorred. It's evil. You can't stand it. You hate it. You got to convince yourself of that. You want to know how you convince yourself of that? I guess nobody wants to know but get a liar. Okay, get a liar. I'll let you know because you seem you're the only one that want to know. Go to Proverbs 16 and 3. And maybe the rest of y'all can get some of it, but get a liar wants to know. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit your works unto the Lord, and he's going to establish your thoughts. That means your mind is focused on these scriptures and he's going to establish the way you think. But if you, if you hop between the Bible and TikTok, dude, you on your own, buddy. <laughs> you ain't going to be able to establish nothing. Commit thy works unto the Lord and God said, I will establish your thoughts the way you think I'm going to establish. You got to put your mind focused here. Can't be all over the place. Now, if you all got something, all praise it, but I know that he's the only one that asked to understand how to do it, so that was it. Go back to Sirach 19. Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 5. Whoso taketh pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned, but he that resisteth pleasures crowneth his life. But he that resisteth pleasure will crown his life. Why? Because if you take a little pleasure in that little bit of wickedness, how is that? Let's read verse 2. Verse 2, wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. A little wine, a little drink, a little woman, ah, you fall away. You take a pleasure in that stuff. Read on. And he that cleaveth the harlots will become impudent. If you like that song, your, broody, your booty brown and your thing pink, and there's a party that like that, go, oh, that, that, look at her. <laughs> okay, then we know, okay, you like whores, and you're going to fall. And the only person know that is you inside of you. So God's going to put you in them situations to try you. Thank God that he reveals it. Because you might not have known that about yourself. But guess what? If you an earshot of this today, you know now. And you will not. God will remove that cloak that you can use to say you don't know. You shouldn't have listened to this class today. Because now you know. Too late. Go back. Verse 6. Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 6. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. Mm -hmm. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. Right. Shut up. Be slow to speak. Listen and learn. Sirach 18. Watch this. 
verse 30. Sirach, chapter 18 and verse 30. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. Isn't that another word for re refrain means to resist? Right. Resist. How do you do that? You got to see sin for what it is, and you have to abhor it. You can't take no pleasure in any wickedness. But if there's a part of you that do, you will not be able to overcome. You got to be able to withstand and resist it. Here you go. James 4. We read it earlier. James 4. Verse 7. The book of James, chapter 4 and verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Didn't we just read that in Proverbs 16? What does it say in Proverbs 16? Okay, in other words, commit is submit. Right. Saying the same thing. Read on. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Commit your works unto the Lord, and he will establish your thoughts. Submit yourself unto what? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And he will flee from you. Where is the devil at in your mind? Chapter 4, verse 1. From, when, from whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts? That war in your members? Even the lust, that war in your members? What members are we talking about first and foremost? That where sin begins. It's in your mind. That's the member we're first going to start with. Go to Romans chapter 7. Romans 7 verse 3. The book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 3. So then, if while her husband liveth. No, uh, what did I say? I'm sorry. Oh, 723. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. 7 and verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. Whoa. Where is that war at? Warring against the law of my mind. You're warring in your mind. That's where the war is at. You've heard me talk about this so many times before. Whence cometh wars and fighting amongst you? Come they not hence? You're warring in your thoughts. But you got to overcome evil with good. Who's going to win? Whichever one you love is going to win. Whichever one you love more is going to be the one that's going to win. You love? Why do people sin? Because it feel good. Ain't nobody ever done something that don't feel good. Now the question is, why does it feel good too? To the spirit or the flesh? That's why you do it. We better feel good to the spirit first. That's what you better. Because that's the one. God said, don't worry about the body. Worry about me who can kill body and soul. <laughs> that's what you better worry about. Don't worry about the flesh. This body that we have right now is, is meant to die. It cannot contain and hold the spirit that's in us. The spirit that's in us was meant to live forever. This cardinal body cannot hold this. Only for dispensation of time until we get our real body, that immortal body. So he's saying, you weren't about this life. You're trying, you trying, you trying to satisfy this flesh. I will kill you after death, he said. I don't think death is the death I'm talking about. He's, I got another brand new shit. I got another death for you. I got something else. You don't even understand the death that I'm talking about. You know why? Because you didn't ask of me. If you're asking me, I would explain to you the death I'm talking about. And then you start thinking about temptations, and you're like, ah, the second death or her? Nah, I'm good. Let me continue on with God. Where are we at? Verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, mm -hmm. and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Because the war of my mind now have brought me to, to yield to my flesh. 
And now I'm giving into my mouth, my conversation. I'm giving into my eyes. I'm giving into my privates. I'm my, I've given myself over because I lost the war that's in my mind. So back to James 4 and 1. What does it say? The book of James chapter 4 and verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? That war in your members? That's why he said to do what? Verse 8. Draw nigh to God. You better draw nigh to him, buddy. And you better do what? Verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Draw nigh to God. Submit to God. Verse 7, the second part. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. Second part of verse 8. Cleanse. Cleanse your hands. You better cleanse your hands. You read on. Ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Ye double-minded. Because you will not be able to fall. You will fall to the temptations if you are double-minded. Wisdom of Solomon 6. Six and 11. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 11. Wherefore, set your affection... Upon my words. You better set your affection upon his words. Read on. Desire them, and ye shall be instructed. And if you desire them, ye shall be instructed. Read on. Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. His wisdom is glorious and will never fade away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her. Did he say he'll give to every man liberally as they want? Read on. And found of such as seek her. And will be found of those that really want her. Read on. She preventeth them that desire her. She what? She preventeth them that desire her. She prevents you from what? Sin. She will give you a way to escape if you desire her. Read on. In making herself first known unto them. Read on. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her. Sitting at his doors. The door, what's the door he's going to be sitting, wisdom going to be sitting at? The door of your mind. The Lord said, commit yourself unto him and he will establish your thoughts. Wisdom will be at the door of your mind. So then if wisdom is at the door of your mind, when Satan pop up, what's wisdom going to do? Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. But if you're double-minded, that's a revolving door. Satan jumping, hey, nigga, what's up? Jump out. You try to fight it off. He said, no, 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 no. After a while, God's going to say, I cannot dwell in a body that's subject to sin. You haven't made a choice. So you know what? I'm good. I'm leaving you. I'm going to give you over to yourself. Let you do what you want to do because evidently you ain't learned that I'm the, I'm the one. I'm not that important to you. But if you love it, it says, wherefore, set your affections upon my word. Set your affections upon my word. Set your affection, what you love, what feels good upon my words. For in them you think you have eternal life. Desire them, and, it sh and ye shall be instructed. Desire my, desire my words, and I'm going to instruct you. I will instruct your thoughts. It says, I will instruct you. I lost my place. Verse 12, wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Hold fast. And ye, uh, yea, she is easily seen of them that love her. It's easy. He said, I give to any man liberally if that's what you really want. Uh, easy seen of her that love them and found of such that seek her. Search the scriptures. She prevented them that desire her. She will prevent you and protect you if you desire her. And what? And uh, prevent her that desire your love. And maketh herself known unto them. Whoso seek her early shall have no great travail. You're not going to go through. You, the tra travail is what? Subcoming to those evils. And it says, for he <coughs> shall find her sitting at his door. The door of your mind. Where that great war is at. The wisdom will be there. Was that what Paul went through? We're reading in Romans 7. Things I should not do, that I do. Did he overcome it? Yes, he said, overcome it. That's what he says, thenceforth there's a crown laying up for me. I overcame it. 
and I'm showing you how you overcome it. Very simple. You better stay in this book. Okay. So let's go to Matthew 26 now. Now we're going to talk about praying now. Let's go to pray. Matthew 26. Verse 41. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41. Mm-hmm. Watch and pray. What? Watch and pray. Mm-hmm. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. It says, now watch this, watch this. I want you to do the, watch this. Uh, look at verse 40, watch this. Verse 40, and he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter. He find them asleep, but who he, t- who he spoke to directly? Why, Peter? Shalom, sir. He's the one that was talking like, you know, I'm ready to die. I'm ready. I'm, I'm just ready to hold it down for everything. Right. And Peter was set to be the head of the church when he left. Yes, sir. He said he found all these people sleeping. This is when he's on his hour's temptation, Christ. He came back. He said he saw him sleeping. He said, Peter. What? He, he said, Peter, I know you. <laughs> Peter, read. What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Man, Peter, you couldn't watch with me one hour? Read on. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. He told Peter, same desire for you, dude. He want all of you, but I'm talking to you, Peter, because you have a great charge in front of you. You couldn't watch for one hour? Read on. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, so now. When we hear the word watch, we think watch is Christ up there praying. What, 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 what does he mean by watch? Let's go. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6. Ah, give me a second. 6. 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 15. To think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom. To think therefore upon her is what? Is perfection of wisdom. Is perfection of wisdom. To think upon her is the perfection of wisdom. Read on. And whoso watcheth for her. And whoso what? Watcheth for her. Whoso watcheth for her. Shall quickly be without care. And you're going to be without care. The watching is watching for what? For wisdom. I need you to pay attention and look for wisdom. Sir, Peter, don't get distracted. Pay attention of all that's going on. Because Satan desired to sift you as wheat. I need you to see everything going on. Pay attention to everything. Read on. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her. Because wisdom is going to seek those that are worthy of her. Set your affection on her. Read on. Showing herself favorably unto them in the ways. Now watch this. Jump on down to verse 25. Verse 25. Receive therefore instruction through my words. I lost my place. Wisdom of Solomon. I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, 625. Read on. Receive, therefore, instruction through my words. Through my what? Through my words. Receive instruction through my words. Read on. And it shall do good, and it shall do you good. And it's going to do you good. So watch for my wisdom. Seek instruction through my words, and it's going to do you good. So when he told him to watch and pray, watch for wisdom. Search the scriptures. I'm telling you, he's coming from you. Don't, don't, don't lose mind of what this whole thing is about. Now he told him to pray. What do you think prayer is talking about, everybody? Give me Sirach 51. The book of Sirach, chapter 51, verse 13. The book of Sirach, chapter 51 and verse 13. When I was yet young, or ever I went abroad, I desired wisdom openly in my prayer. Mm -hmm. I I desire wisdom openly in my prayer. Whenever I was young, I always desired wisdom when I prayed. Read on. 
I prayed for her before the temple. I prayed for her before the temple. Now here's the point. And will seek her out even to the end. And I will seek her out. Where did, so when praying, praying is what? Praying and seeking her out. Where do you seek her out at? So you think it's just praying, like I just pray for wisdom? No, I pray and I what? Will seek her out even to the end. I will endure. I will search the scriptures. So when you talk watch and pray, watch and pray means to study. Because if you pray to God, God don't hear the prayer of sinners. Well, how are you going to find out what sin is? Say no rocket science. Only a Christian would not understand this. That's why people don't understand this. People think there's some power in just saying, I'm just going to pray and pray and pray. Not if you ain't studying, you ain't going to understand. You got to seek for her. You got to learn what it is to prove to, prove to God that you love him. Application. Study. Pray. And what? People say, I'm just going to fast and pray. Oh, gosh, you can kind of Christian. What are you talking about? You're going nowhere. And then you, 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 you fast and pray, and the next day you're on Pornhub. <laughs> okay, sure. And you're filled with the spirit of Jesus. Maybe Jesus, but not Jesus' Bible. Read. Verse 14, I prayed for her before the temple and will seek her out even to the end. Read on. Even from the flower till the grape was ripe. I seeked her even from the flower till the grape was ripe. Meaning what? I never stop. I never stop. I hold fast onto her from a flower to its fully ripened. Never let it go. Read on. Hath my heart delighted in her. My foot went the right way. From my youth up sought I after her. I, my foot went the right way. My foot went the right way. I want you to read verse 19. Verse 19. My soul hath wrestled with her. My soul was wrestling with her. Why? Because wisdom now is showing me all the things that was wrong with me. And my, foot, my, my soul wrestled with it. Read on. And in my doings I was exact. But in my doings, I did the right thing at the end of it. Read on. I stretched forth my hands to the heaven above and bewailed my ignorances of her. I bewailed all my ignorances of her. But I searched the scriptures and I found out exactly because God gave me a way to accept. That's why he said, ask of me and I'll give you as much as you want. I'll show you how to get around it. Read on. I directed my soul unto her and I found her in pureness. And then I found her in pureness. Jump back up to verse 15. Verse 15. Even from the flower to the grape was ripe, have my heart delighted in her. Read. My foot went the right way. My foot went the right way. Even though my soul wrestled after I was corrected, my foot went the right way. Hebrews. Hold this. We're going to come right back here. Hebrews. Chapter 12, 13. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 13. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. What was lamed? That's the wrestling right there we just read. That's the correction because it says in verse 7, If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? The father got to chasten you. So kind of joy when you fall into these temptations so you can get chastened with the word of God. If you study, he'll give to you liberally and show you a way to escape. Then you got verse 13. Verse 13, make straight paths for your feet. You better make your feet straight back on that path. Read on. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Lest that which is lame, because you fell into his temptation, you never got it right. Let's go back to Sirach 51, verse 16. Sirach chapter 51, verse 16. I bowed down my ear a little and received her 
and got much learning. And I got much learning because I bowed down my ear. They go to escape, and I got much learning. Read on. I profited therein. Therefore will I ascribe the glory unto him that giveth me wisdom. Read. For I purpose to do after her, and earnestly I follow that which is good. So shall I not be confounded. Because I earnestly follow after her. I re- Even though I, wore, I was messed up in some ways, I earnestly follow. Thank you, Lord, for letting me go through these temptations that I could see what's deep in me that's messed up. And I'm going to earnestly follow after thee. Was that not what was with Peter? Peter wept bitterly and knew I was wrong. And he, early, and he came back and he did what? Fed the flock. Got himself right. And he lost his life for this gospel. Because that's what he was trying to save. That was his temptation, his own life. And God said, I'm going to show you. Yeah, you talking about you ready to go to prison and die with me. Man, that thing's not, I'm a, the, the, the crow won't even crow three times before you deny me. Yeah, okay, you think you ready, but you ain't there yet, buddy. Read on. Verse 17. I'm sorry, verse 19. My soul have wrestled with her, mm-hmm. and in my doings I was exact. Mm-hmm. I stretched forth my hands to the heavens above Read. and bewailed my ignorances of her. Read on. I directed my soul unto her, and I found her in pureness. I have had my heart joined with her from the beginning. Therefore shall I not be forsaken. You know what I mean from the beginning, meaning he was sincere. Even though he was ignorant of some of the things he did, he was sincere. That's what's let your life be sincere. Because sometimes we slip with our tongues, but not from our hearts. Sometimes we fall, but we really ain't that evil. God understands that. But he said, I'm going to give you a way to escape, but you better love me. Because in the scriptures is eternal life. But if you caught between two opinions, you still got your foot back in the world. That's why I've said in this truth, every year you better become more disciplined. Because if you ain't growing, you getting smaller. If you the same person you was two, three years ago, ooh, you in trouble, buddy. <laughs> you're in trouble. This, you're supposed to be growing in this truth and application of these laws. Not you the same person you was 10 years ago. Imagine if I was the same person I was back when I came in. Man, first I wouldn't even be here in the first place. God said, I have no use of you. You're no good. You're no good to me. You don't bear no fruit. Then you need to be hewn down. You got to what? Grow to the full statue of Christ. Read on. Verse 21, my heart was troubled in seeking her. Therefore, have I gotten a good possession? You better have a conscience and your heart better be troubled when you're seeking her. Feel convicted. Damn, I was evil. Was that not Paul? Paul said, I was a murderer. It's by his mercy I'm here now. Read on. The Lord hath given me a tongue for my reward, and I will praise him therewith. Praise him to who? To the ones that come behind me. To guide them. Read on. Draw near unto me, ye unlearned. Didn't we just read that in Peter's? Draw to me. Resist the devil. Draw to me, you unlearned. Read on. And dwell in the house of learning. Here's the house of learning, everybody. You're here right now online. This is the house of learning. Can't say, if you don't do it, it's just because this ain't for you, buddy. Here's the house of learning. Read on. Wherefore are ye slow? And what say ye of these things? Seeing your souls are very thirsty. All our souls are very thirsty, and we need to be warded with what? The word of God. Watch this. Uh, Back to Matthew 26, verse 41. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Okay, how do you do that? We just read it. Keep these commandments. Read on. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Because your spirit is willing, but that flesh is weak inside of you. Well, give me Romans 7, 18. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Mm -hmm. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. He's struggling. He's, I don't, I don't know how to find, I'm trying to do right, but I can't do right, but I want to do right. But I mean, I'm a good person. I really believe this truth. Well then, buddy, what you got to do? You got to overcome evil with good. That's why James said, go to James. Hold this, we're going to come back here. That's why James said this. Uh, James, uh, give me a second. It's happened we work with two Bibles. Give me a second. 
James, 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 James. Uh, ah, my Bible's ripped. Give me a second. Oh, not James. It's John. First John. Not James. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, First John's uh, 3. Verse 7. First John chapter 3 and verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. For he that doeth righteousness is righteous. That's the point. If you do righteous, you're righteous. That's what it comes down to. All that talk of what you say or whatever, you know the body fruits. So go back to Romans. Eighteen. Romans chapter 7 verse 18. For I know that in me. That is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. You, you can't find it? You find that why? Why can't you find it? Huh? Why can't you find it? Here we go. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. That's why you can't find it. Read on. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. You better be, you bet that war that's inside of you. Whence cometh wars and fighting amongst you? Come in at hence from the lust that war on your mentors. He tell you, flee. He said, he said, resist those temptations and Satan will eventually flee from you. He says in Proverbs 16 and 3, commit thy works unto the Lord, and he's going to establish your thoughts. Jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. That flesh is going to bring you the law of sin. He said, your mind. So now which one is supposed to win? Your mind. Watch this. Ver chapter 8, verse 1. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So the spirit overcame the flesh. That's why he says verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Right. But they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. If you mind the flesh you're going to mind the things after the flesh. You're going to mind Cardi B or whatever foolishness or the cares of this world. But if you're after the spirit you're going to be in them scriptures and you're going to establish your thoughts. All right, watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9. We'll wrap it up right now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, and verse 15. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul. What? The corruptible body presseth down the soul. This corruptible body will press down the spirit in you that want to do right. And the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. And this earthly tabernacle will weigh down the mind that what? Museth upon many things. That museth, that entertains many things. That's what the word muse mean. You're amused by it. It sounds good. It feels good. You entertain it. It says what? Read that verse again. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul. That's the war. And the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. And the earthly tabernacle, this flesh, will weigh down the mind that entertains. Wickedness. It will weigh you down. Commit your, it says, commit your self unto the Lord and he will establish your thoughts. You entertain that, it will weigh you down. 
You will not be able to overcome that. Uh, I'll ask one more scripture and I'm finished. Sirach 20, Sirach 33. Give me one second. Sirach 33, verse 27. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 27. Send him to labor that he be not idle. Send him to labor. Send that boy or send that man or that child to labor that he be not idle. For idleness teacheth much evil. All that free time will teach you to do evil. So that's why the Lord said, boy, you better, you better desire me. You better be in the scriptures. For in them is your Savior. It will prevent you from sin. So how do you overcome sin? Do not stay idle. Stay in them scriptures. Apply them scriptures. When you pray and you fast, it only works with the application of God's laws. If you don't do that, you will fall. Or we will fall. All right, so everybody, I know Bishop is coming up next. I pray that you receive something from today's class. Stay tuned. IUIC.